Welcome once again to another episode of Ask the Techies. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how you can run Windows 7 on your iPad. Not only that, I'm also going to show you how you can run Mac OS X, Snow Leopard, on your iPad. Well, sort of. My secret trick is a little program called Log Me In. It's a little app that you can buy for the iPad that allows you to uh, sort of remote desktop to your computers. So, like here's an example. I'm running Windows 7 on this computer, and you can see I've got uh, Word open, and right down here is my, uh, let me go over here to tap, and you can see right there is my, uh, and you can come up here and load a program. Let's uh, load uh, Microsoft Word. Well, there's Word. Uh, come over here, and I've actually got a Chrome thing up. Tap. There we go. So there we go. I'm actually running Chrome on my Windows 7 computer through this. Look, Ma, no wires. <laughs> no connection. And this is basically, uh, let me close out and show you real quick. It's a program you can download called Log Me In Ignition. And uh, you tap on that. And the way it works is you come in here, you have to set up an account. And you uh, set up a password, you have to do it at their website, and then what you have to do is you have to download and install a program onto each computer that you want to be able to access remotely, and you have to do it with your email and password that you, with your LogMeIn account, okay? And that way you can access. I do recommend that you set up the password feature and the preferences and turn on the, uh, in order for you to be able to access it, make sure you have a really good password, but this is pretty secure. It's, it's using encryption, which is nice. Um, you can tell to remember this log me in. This is just going to log me into my Ignition account. Then I can find my computers. I'm like, there's my Windows 7 computer, or here's the Video Studio one. This one right here, I'm going to connect to it. Oops, didn't mean to hit that one. Let me hit cancel. I'm going to hit this one for the Video Studio to connect to this computer. And then I just got to type in the, uh, the uh, password for this one. And the ID and the password. And um, make sure that you have to remember the password login off because if you were to lose your iPad, people would be able to access your computer potentially without you'd have to trash the account and start new. And then it gives you little hints in here on things to do. I'm going to turn, go continue to computer, and there we are. I'm now connecting to this computer up here. And you can see up here on the screen, it says this computer is being remotely controlled. Something pops up that alerts me that someone is accessing my computer, which is a nice thing to have. So you do see that. However, I can close that out. I can remotely come up here and tap, and it's gone. Now, the way this is working is uh, I keep, the pointer stays in the middle, and I just move the screen to get to whatever it is that I want to click, and then I just tap. And I can tap anywhere, and it will pull it up. I moved my finger when I tapped. There we go, or disappear. Okay. Now, there's other settings you can do. If you click on the little settings button, you can click on that. And you do have an option in here. Instead of having screen moves, you can do mouse moves. I found this to be more confusing. Um, but I'll show you how this works. Click done. And the way this works is I'm, the mouse moves with my finger. And then I can come up here and I can tap on things. Go to window, tap, finder, tap. And you may find that's more useful. And it's pretty much a one-to-one -one ratio as you move your finger across, except when you have to zoom in. And you will have to zoom in because when you want to get into the dock, zoom in, there we go, to launch that application that you want to get to, then then it, it, it takes a little more moving across to get to what you want. But there you are. So I'm connecting to this computer, no wires, it's all through the network, and it is encrypted, it is secure, and I'm able to go in here and launch programs, uh, do stuff. I can check on the status of uh, projects that are going on. This is a big plus for me because I often have to render files and it's nice to be able to access another computer to see if it's done compressing the file and compressor so then I can upload it to the internet. So this gives me a way to remotely check on computers while I'm away. Um, <clears throat> you do have the two finger kind of scroll where you can take two fingers just like you have on the track pads on the MacBooks. Um, you can just tap slide down. You see my fingers with what's happening over here and just go up, 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 and it scrolls the other direction. So you do it this way to go up, and this way to go down. And if you want to do a right click, uh, you typically uh, do two fingers, and you see what you get. First, you have to get your pointer to where you want it, and then you can do two fingers, and it gives you the same as a right click, just like the trackpad on the MacBook. So it's very intuitive. Now, if you want to move something, 
click to undo. Let's say I want to move this window. First I tap it to select it. And then what you do is you do a, a tap and then another tap and you leave your finger on the screen. Let me show you. And then I can move the window. And it's very slow to respond. This is the biggest minus is that it takes a while for it to respond to the movements. So you have to be patient. If you're going to move windows around and move icons around on the desktop, you'll want to make sure that you uh, give it some time. Um, but you just have to tap and tap and then move it. And the hard part about that is if your fingers don't tap in the same place it, it, or if you sludge, smudge your fingers a little bit, it may not work quite so well. You might have to train yourself a little bit to be able to access this. You do have to actually get access to the computer that you want to control to be able to install the LogMeIn software on there. And it doesn't open up file sharing. It doesn't open up a remote desktop on the Mac. Uh, what it does is it installs a program that allows it to open up some ports for you to be able to connect with the LogMeIn Ignition iPad application. Now there's also a desktop application that they have that has an annual subscription rate. But this, once you pay for this application, that's it. There's no more fees, there's no monthly fees you have to do to be able to access uh, all the computers that you want to access. You just have to get access to them and install that free version from the web for it to be a client that you can access. So that's nice. And the coolest thing about it for me is I always had trouble trying to do VNC, remote desktop stuff, when it was the computer was behind a, a router, such as an airport base station that Apple uses their wireless router. And this, boom, right to it. Didn't have any problems. Connect off campus, on campus, uh, from home, uh, no problems. Windows, Mac, not an issue. It simplifies it. I can't recommend this program high enough if you really need to access other computers or maybe troubleshoot for grandma. You install that on her computer, then you can remote access her computer and fix things for her. In fact, I can even log in as a different user on this computer if I want. Let me show you. Come up here, and I'm going to switch to another user. Whoops, slip my mouse a little bit. Tap. And I can actually get to the login screen. And I'm going to go ahead and type in the password here for this. And i got to pull up the keyboard. By the way, the keyboard may not show up. You just tap this little thing right there. Boom. Keyboard pops up. That's how you do it. Let me type in the password for that. Hit return. And you'll see on the screen. Let me close the keyboard. And you're going to see on here, basically the same kind of thing that you're seeing right there. So while doing this back and forth, I was able to log in even as a different user. Now it changes it on here and you do see the, the computer is being remotely controlled. Now on the keyboard, something I should point out to you is you notice there's no tab key. So when you type in like a, uh, the username and the password, um, it, it, you want to hit tab and there's no, you don't see a tab key there. And you hit this key and it gives you the numbers and some other characters like the dollar symbol, the and symbol. But how do you get to some of those other characters? Well, fortunately they thought this through.